What's up fellow wanderers and welcome to a new video series that is going to be all about Red Deer's historic buildings. Mainly focusing in on the stories behind the buildings but also about the buildings themselves. Now here we are looking at the old Presbyterian church steeple which unfortunately is the only remaining portion of the old Presbyterian church as that building was burnt down sometime in the late 70s I believe. But with the Presbyterian church having such an impact on Red Deer's early history the steeple is salvaged as to serve as a memorial to that church in Heritage Square. Now we are looking at the Norwegian Lofthus, or as it's called, the Asperland Lofthus. It is a museum dedicated to the Scandinavian impact on Red Deer's early history. As you can see, it is heavily influenced by traditional Scandinavian architecture even to the roof, which is a sod roof, and it is, as I have mentioned, a museum that is operational during the spring and summer months um, on Saturdays, Sundays, and some Fridays. Now we are approaching the Gates Library, which is the only remaining portion of the retirement home built by the Reverend Leonard Gates, who arrived in the Red Deer area in 1884 with his wife and ten children. Reverend Gates was the first to homestead what is now downtown Red Deer, and in 1901, Reverend Gates moved back to Red Deer from Brandon, Manitoba, and built Woodley Cottage on 56th Street. In response to his wife's failing health, Reverend Gates constructed the library annex, where he could work and meet with friends without disturbing Mrs. Gates. I found this particularly interesting to me, as I live in the subdivision called Woodley in Red Deer, and to learn that one of your city's founding fathers built a home and then named it after your, well, named it for a subdivision that hadn't been built yet was fascinating. Now we are looking at the, a recreation of Red Deer's first school, the Crossing School, which was originally built near the Fort Normandale area, and as you can see, it is heavily influenced by the pioneers that came in from Ontario in search of land, because a lot of the buildings back, back out east were dark uh, wood buildings. And I've been inside this recreation. It's fascinating. They have the old Union Jack. The um, desks are all set up like they would have been in the original. The first graders would sit in the first row, and then so on and so forth. And if you didn't notice, if you saw those icicles on the the roof, then it was because they didn't have central heating back in the day. So how they would heat these buildings, schools, houses, whatever, would be either through fireplace, gas stove, and wood stove, which was the case in the crossing school. Now we have moved on to Red Deer's oldest surviving building, the Stephenson Hall Block, which was built in 1891 to house the grocery business of Messrs. Stephenson and Hall. Over over the years, it found alternate uses, serving as a law office, bank, land agency, tailor shop, and gas station. It was also the site of Red Deer's early board of trade and village council meetings. The wood frame structure is a good example of prairie pioneer architecture with a type of boomtown front used to disguise the actual roof shape and to increase the apparent size of the building. It is an enduring reminder of Red Deer's modest beginnings. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, and if you want to be notified of when I release new videos, hit that bell icon. With that being said, wanderer out. Get down to um, Heritage Square in downtown Red Deer to learn about Red Deer's early history, and hopefully you guys enjoy learning about Red Deer's history, and have a wonderful day.